What's up, watchers? Uh, my name is Will, and here we are with my summer interview of Sam Wilson, Captain America number two. So let's get started. It picks up where the first issue left off of Sam kind of explaining to some kids, uh, some passengers on the plane, actually, what's been going on with his life recently and kind of what led up to him flying on a plane instead of flying with his wings. So it goes to another flashback uh, six months prior where S.H.I.E.L.D. has apparently been hacked and secret plans leaked. There's something called the COVID program. Now, I'm not going to go into details about it, but uh, it's it's pretty crazy. So it, it builds up more tension, discusses where Steve's been the whole time, and Steve actually defends Sam's decision, saying that uh, his past actions of the Captain America shouldn't affect Sam's decision to have a political stance, and kind of agreed with him on it. But Steve, it goes forward in the flashback to why Steve was there to see Sam in the first place. He's really there just to arrest the Sons of Serpent, but also to tell Sam the story. And one of the Sons of Serpent, uh, well, the Serpents clearly get their butts kicked, and one teleports away with a hostage. Steve and Sam start talking about why one another there in the first place, and Sam leaves to go find the hostage while his birds leave the nice little package, if you will, for Steve and the rest of S.H.I.E.L.D. So Sam catches up with them speedily by using, you know, bird telepathy. It's a magical little thing. And he actually finds out that the serpent agent and the kidnapped person, the hostage, are in cahoots with each other. And before he can really get some straight answers, he runs back into Armadillo, who has some very old beef with him that they're going to. But it gets more political as it goes on, as Steve and Sam kind of, it establishes what their breaking point was. And that Steve is more a man of justice under the system for the people. And he thinks the country will do what's right. Sam, on the other hand, is justice for the people, despite what the system says. So Sam knows it doesn't always do what's right, but he kind of hopes it does. And that's kind of where they disagree. So Cap fought off S.H.I.E.L.D. to protect the Whisperer, who is actually connected to the earlier stated Kobik program. And he got the immunity deal for catching Zemo and then got let go. Uh, overall, it has a nice warm ending, despite hindsight not being too pleasant. It, it ends on a pretty nice note. So, the positives of the issue, it ends on a pretty happy tone. Uh, granted, there's a little bit of debate at the end. There's no real established arc yet, which isn't that bad, because it's nice to see kind of case-by-case -case stories of the new Sam Wilson, as he has to deal with being the new Captain America, and kind of the struggle that come with that. And as he was saying, kind of when you're a superhero, things don't really come as you would expect them to be. There's no organization, it's just kind of on the fly. And the, the art is really growing on me. It's really strong. It's dynamic. And they stay with kind of modern political issues. They're dealing with like race and border control and other things like that. If there are any negatives I have for it, it might be that the explanation as to why Steve and Cap had their falling out uh, could have probably been expanded onto maybe one more issue, maybe two. So it could be seen as a little rushed. And some people may not enjoy the political overtone, but you're reading a book called Captain America. So you kind of knew what you were in for. Overall, I would give this book a solid 8.5. Uh, check it out. I highly recommend it. It's a pretty good book. So uh, that's it for the review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And uh, keep checking out and stay up with the Hyper Network. I've been Will and I'm out.